Let us praise the Lord. Praise God. Let us praise the Lord one more time. Let us glorify God. We are here to praise God. That's why we are here today. Okay? We are not going to be sitting down there and pause, get ready to go to bed. We are here to worship God. Amen. It's just for a few hours. So let us give him all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Just for a few minutes. At this time, I'm called upon to introduce the first speaker. If you notice, I don't have a script. I don't have anything written. I'm just going to say what I know about this person. God has bring her here to be a part of this body. And I realize that she is a no-nonsense person. She has been blessed with the Lord with children, grandchildren, but she chooses not to be at home with them, but to come here and join us to worship God. She is a true believer. Right now, she be start becoming one of our, our, um, our great leader. She, she go out there to, to be in the nursing homes with people. And wherever she goes, she tell people about the love of God. She's a no-nonsense person. And with no further comment, I just want to introduce to some and present to others our dear deaconess. Could you please stand for me? I'm sorry about that. So anxious to get her up here. <laughs> I just want to introduce to some and present to others our dear sister, deaconess M. Morgan. Oh, Deaconess Johnson, I always thought you were the no-nonsense person. I always thought you were the no-nonsense person, but I learned something today that I am. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Praise God this morning. I would like to acknowledge on, the, on this Deaconess Day, Deacon's Day, I would like to acknowledge my pastor and our First Lady, Elder Kathleen Dillon, and the entire ministerial staff of this great church. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I just thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He's worthy. Glory. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. He's in the house. Hallelujah. I think it's all right. Bless you, Jesus. Praise God. This morning, this morning, I will be speaking on God's faithfulness. And this is a special topic to me. Because when I look back over my life and see the faithfulness of God and what he has done in my life up to this point, I just thank God. So let us pray. Father God, I just give you thanks this morning. I thank you for your love for us. And I thank you for your protection and your safekeeping over us and over our families, Father God, and our loved ones. Father, let more of you come into me this morning and less of me as I present your word, Father God. I just love and adore you and I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This scripture was already read, but I will read two more verses of this scripture, Psalms 89, and I will read from 1 to 3. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. All right. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. In spite of, as we read the scripture, 
especially verse 1, in spite of all that happened to David's life, the deplorable condition he found himself in, the state of emergency, whatever, all everything, but David had a covenant with his God. Amen. And so his God was faithful to him in everything that he went through. God was faithful to him. Amen. And we as chosen children of God, we can and should experience the same fatal faithfulness from our Father God. Amen. One of my favorite things about serving my God and walking with God is His faithfulness. Even when we are not faithful. And a lot of times we are not faithful to Him, but He is faithful. He remains faithful. When he makes a promise to us, he keeps it. Amen. I can't tell you how many times in my life upon the 75 years of age <laughs> that God has proven his faithfulness to me. I'm standing here. I'm standing here nine years breast cancer free. And so I have a testimony. I have a testimony of God's faithfulness. I can talk about his faithfulness with the assurance that he's always with me. And I just want to share something. So, oh, my mouth. Sorry. I just want to share something with you. The enemy doesn't want me to share this, but I'm going to share it. Yesterday, I have a 24-year-old son, grandson, I mean, who is a man of God. And in speaking with my 24-year-old grandson yesterday, it was his birthday, I wished him happy birthday. And he's truly sold out for God. He just graduated from Stanford University. And in speaking to this 24-year-old young man, when I told him, that I was going to speak today on Deacon's Day, and I told him everything. I had, to, I had to lay out everything over the phone, tell him. And he said to me, he said, Grandmother, you have not given, you have to give your testimony. You have so many testimonies that I know of, and you have to give your testimony. And I didn't plan on giving him my, giving my testimony. Because, you know, sometimes you feel that, Everybody has known about your cancer diagnosis. You don't want to talk about it, but you should always. But in, in preparing this message, God brought me back to a place in my life that it was about, it's about 10, 11 years now. It's right after I retired from Cook County Hospital, I was diagnosed with glaucoma. And see, all I've never given that testimony before. Never given that testimony. But I have to share it today because the day I was diagnosed, the pressures in my eye was so high that the doctor tell me, say, may I go blind. It was so high, people. They placed me in a room, and I'm not going to take up too much time. They placed me in a room by myself. That doctor, the ophthalmologist, he said, do you want to call anybody? I said, no. And mind you, I was not walking with my God like I'm walking with him now. I was, I was, it was during the time when I was gypsy all over these different churches, spiritual gypsy, attending every church. I knew of God, but I was not serving him. And while he left me in that room and he said, I'm going to give you some medication, and I need, I'm not going to send you home, I cannot send you home, this pressure is too high. People... I prayed. Yes. I prayed yes. in that room because I said, blind? No, I'm not, I'm not receiving That's blind right. today. But, but, but anyhow, God has been faithful to me that I did have the glaucoma surgery on both eyes. Everything went well. And, and, and saints, brethren, I am standing here today 